because when you're competing against Tom Izzo, who is not just a Hall of Fame basketball coach, but a Hall of Fame uh, person and a very, very, very close friend of mine, uh, and that program, and uh, somebody asked on the Zoom, what, what's, what is it that I admire the most? They do, they check your fillings, right? They wanna look in there and say, hmm, you got a cavity, you better get that changed. And so for us to answer that, uh, particularly after Illinois, and I, and I, and I appreciate it. The, the disappointed in the result with Illinois, but I wasn't disappointed with the effort. Uh, and then turning it around so, qu so quickly with the idea of mo much more mental practice than a physical practice yesterday. And you could still see it. There was some hurt feelings and disappointment. Uh, and, and I don't blow smoke. When I walked up today at 4.30 up the tunnel and I saw the player's eyes, I said, oh, we, we got, we're good, we're good. Because I wholeheartedly believe if you want to know what somebody feels, look them dead in the eye. And that's what I did. So when I took their pulse, I said, well, oh, game on, game on. And I, I'm not going to have to convince them or we're not going to need uh, a hyper crowd to, to uh, lift these guys. Uh, so tribute to them. Tribute, really a tribute to them. Uh, and then I, in no phony way, I just think that Howard Isley just called a flawless offensive game. And uh, again, the calls were his. Uh, the only call that I did was the one I completely screwed up at the end of the half. I, I will not sleep real long tonight thinking that I forgot to tell Eli that you don't take that shot. The only real possible thing that could happen is for the half to end. Don't shoot the ball until the half ends. And I didn't tell him that. Uh, and it almost you know, cost us with a momentum basket for them at, at the half. But um, Saudi Washington scout, flawless, and Howard Isley's offensive game calling was, you know, if there's a quarterback rating, you know, and the highest rating ever was Brady. I'm supposed to say that, right? Because I'm in Michigan, he has probably the highest rating. Uh, Howard Isley just, he pitched a perfect game. He pitched a perfect game. Chris, you want to start us off? Coach, can you talk about the job you did in transition defense and then number two, what Frankie did when he came in for Devontae, especially defensively? Uh, Frankie first. I would say uh, what I really appreciate is uh, probably before we all leave here tonight, Frankie will be in the PDC working on his foul shot because a point guard can't go over two, right? Uh, and I liked how he popped up. Right, Devontae got the foul, we turn around Frankie. Right? And it wasn't a it wasn't a hesitation. It wasn't like, well, let's move Eli to the point. We knew we were going to do that later later uh, in the half. Uh, Devontae's game has picked up and Frankie's game has picked up because Devontae's game has picked up. They have a very, very, very close relationship. You can hear them pulling for each other and see them pulling for each other in practice. And Frankie, to go up another notch, has to become a better practice player. He's getting there, right? He's that proverbial 1%. But maybe tomorrow we're going to tweak him and ask him to be 5% better in practice and then keep going. Because, you know, as you look around the pro program, he's going to have the ball. And in this game next year, he has to be – you know, Frankie plus plus than he is now. Uh, transition, uh, if I had my notes, I would show it to you. It was number one, it was number two and number three. And uh, the only thing that we did live yesterday was we put the ball on the baseline 
and we had them sprint back, all five guys sprint back, get in the wall and stop the ball. Okay. Now, one of the great transition defensive uh, portions of our game was the ball went in the basket. We shot 61% in the first half, so they're taking the ball out of the net. When we played at Michigan State, we shot about 22%, and they had 20 fast break points in the second half, but it was always a broken court. So because we were so efficient offensively, they had to take the ball out, and we could min uh, minimize uh, Hogarth's creativity and uh, Walker's speed. And the only little run that they had in that second half was they started to, to really speed the game down the floor which is what it, Illinois did to us on Sunday. So lesson learned, and uh, it, it, it's very, very significant. To be walking out of here with Michigan State scoring nine transition points, I'm proud of that. Steve? You mentioned looking at your players' eyes four hours before the game and knowing that you're going to be okay. Could you share with us what you saw in Hunter's eyes specifically? It started yesterday with Hunter. It, it started yesterday. He was light. Now, you know, people that were being nasty would say, you know, silly or whatever. I particularly enjoy Hunter, right? And sometimes I get chastised by the other coaches because that's my boy and that's this and that's that. <laughs> but uh, I don't think this is funny, you know, like this whole... Uh, but I do think he can have fun, and he certainly will push that. Uh, but yesterday when I came out, uh, he was up, and he wasn't that way. Saturday and Sunday, he wasn't, he wasn't Hunter. And uh, I had made a note to say, you know, Hunt, look, if there's something, if you, whatever it is. Uh, but then he connected with Chris Hunter. He did some extra shooting. And um, I, I think the fact that we told him, like they're sending four guys at you, Hunt, not four guys that, they're gonna send four big bodies and we're going through you. And he took 19 shots up there and he took 19 shots today. And I remember saying to Howard Isley, if Hunter gets 19 shots in this game, we're gonna win the game. And it was just, he had, he had joy in his eyes. Hunter had joy in his eyes yesterday and, and today. Phil, that personality that Hunter has, the way he carries himself on the court, the way he's willing to mix it up with the other team, not to mention how well he plays, you know. What impact does that have on, on your team? What impact does that have on the other team? I don't know about the other team, you know. There's a fine line, like you don't, you, and, and when I took him out at the one point, that's what I said, let it be about your game, please. Just let it be about your game. And of course he wants to engage and I'm like, hon, I gotta like, a, I got a game to coach here. I don't really have the, the, the time for this. Uh, but one of the things that Hunter has done at the insistence of Juwan is that he has become vocal. He, he will, he will speak. So for a lot of time, calling it the way it is, in November and December, we, we, were, we were one one horse, one horse, right? Eli. Eli was the one giving them instructions on where to go on offense, where to go on defense. And now Hunter picking that up and being challenged in front of everybody. Don't, don't, don't just be like a, oh, well, man, that's a lot of points. No, I, I like the fact that he talked. He, he was directing them. He was telling them during the timeouts on what angle they could get him the ball. And he also was communicating with myself and with Howard Isley on he, he thought this would work or that would work. You know, the extracurricular, eh, not, not for me. You know, hunt, let, let, it, let it be about, and, and do your personality. I'm not saying, you know, I mean, I, I'm not asking somebody to become like a monk. You're certainly not a you know, uh, 
but he's a special, he, he really is. He's, he is a really, 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 he's a true character. And as many of you have heard me say this, if it does not work out in basketball, I dare any of you, I dare any of you to deny me this fact. He will be a WWE villain. <laughs> he won't be a good guy, but he'll be a villain. He will sell a lot of tickets for WWE. Well, Jeff, so just a quick follow-up. When, when the refs came over and talked to Izzo, clearly about what him and Hunter were doing, did they talk to you? What was that? Did you have to say anything to anybody, to Hunter or anyone? Uh, they just asked me to speak to Hunter and, and that, you know, it would not be tolerated. And, and I'll be honest, I'm going to raise my hand. I saw in the first half where he was looking over at, at their bench. And um, I should have said something then, but I, I, I blanked on it. So I, I spoke to him when he, he came out. There was a stretch where he came out. Brandon Johns went in. And that's when I said, Hunter, let it be about your, your play. Michael? So we've seen some games this year where Hunter's relied a little bit more on the hook shots, and then tonight it looked like he was more willing to kind of put his head down and try and get all the way to the rim, whether he was dunking it or laying it in. Was that something that you guys wanted him to do, or is that just what you saw based on you know angles and things like that? Well, I've really been working on Hunt with his drop step and making sure that he powered the ball. I had nothing to do with it, right? I had nothing to do with it. and. Uh, His personal coach is Juwan, and uh, I loved your word there, by the way, angles. I thought he played an extraordinary angles game. Um, and I don't, I, don't, I don't think you can minimize what he did at the other end of the floor because we knew that the ball screen in the middle of the floor, once we stopped transition, we knew that the ball screen in the middle of the floor was the action. And, and we asked Hunter to get uncomfortable. We weren't going to drop. We wanted him to be up. And for the most part, he did, other than uh, the one time that Christie turned the corner late. Um, he, he was a little lazy on that one. But it's all about angles, and it's all about the time that he spent with Chris Hunter. And, and uh, you know, since Juwan's been gone, Chris Hunter is on the floor. Um, and the time that he has spent with, uh, with Juwan. Is there any, I guess, frustration over, at least as far as the ultimate result, the up and down nature of this team? And are you confident that as we start to get closer to <laughs> one and done, you know, win or you're out or go home time, this team will find that? I find it to be challenging, but not frustrating. Uh, I think it's the nature, uh, the nature of the competition that we're that we are playing against. And I don't know if this is a fact. I, I really don't know it's a, if it's a fact. But as I was watching the results, uh, uh, as I was watching the results last week, I was trying to, to remember, did every team in this league go one and one last week? Right? Like, I don't, I don't know that. I, I could be off. But I kept saying, well, this team, I know they just won. But they lost. Illinois came in here and had a one in one week. So, is it the league? Um, but, and, and, but tomorrow I'm going to uh, address it. I'm go I, I was very comforting with them on Monday's practice. Tomorrow we're going to do a little bit more. Okay, we actually shot. And we walked through, brushed up some offense, and walked through Michigan State's and shot foul shots. We were out of here in an hour and five minutes uh, yesterday uh, after film. Tomorrow I'm going to do a little bit more, and some of the guys that didn't play uh, a lot of minutes are, are going to get a, get a sweat uh, tomorrow. And I'm not one to put on a, put on a show for them, but I'm going to be uh, – a little bit of an irritant tomorrow so that we are ready to play on Thursday night. Chris, you want to close us out? You speak to the confidence Kale is playing with and how much he's improved defensively. Mm -hmm. 
I just think like uh, like all of these kids, he, he's a beautiful, beautiful human being. And to see him chop himself up in, in uh, November, December, part of January, like, so he's not a, the seventh player taken in the NBA draft. Does that mean he failed? God bless us. No, he's a kid. He should be a high school senior. But again, there's bounce in his step, and I really appreciate you pointing out his feet have improved. He's not all the way there yet. And there was, a, there was a moment in this game when I knew where that ball was going, and I turned to Sadi, I said, are you sure? And he had, he had him on Gabe Brown, and I was like, all right, I'm with you, man. I'm, I'm with you. And um, he made a mistake. Kayla made a mistake, but right away he acknowledged it, and he didn't let him chew him up. I thought, I thought one of the coolest shots of the game was the one in front of the TV, because uh, he had passed that up, right? Now some would say, well, it was logo three, but guess what? You shoot like him, you could shoot a logo three. Uh, and then we swung it, and the drive to the basket, when I think maybe it was, I, I don't have recollection, but I think it was a 14 point game, and he drove to the basket and got an N1. Um, I, you have to start with, he is a beautiful, beautiful human being. And he is easy to root for. Thank you, Thank you.